Hey everybody, it's Root Beer. So recently Bushiroad had its strategy presentation for 2022 autumn, and because there's no podcast episode this week, I'm doing a quick little recap video for it so that we have a take out there, even if it's my shitty take. Uh, so first things first, we have the upcoming schedule for the anime, so Will Dress Season 2 is going to be coming in January, and Season 3 is coming in July of 2023. I believe Season 1 is just about to wrap up, so, you know, something to look forward to in the upcoming year. Next we have in, D in DBT07, special reprints of all of the triggers. So, I've been saying for a while that with cards like these that essentially become staples and are now very expensive and difficult to acquire, Bushiroad should be doing periodic reprints of them just because they're almost necessary for every deck. Like, if you're using fronts or draws, why wouldn't you take the extra shield value? And, you know, even if the going into soul effect doesn't come up very often, it's still something you can do. So, I'm glad they're reprinting them. It's nice that they're doing it. After that, we have a ban list, so thank you, for the love of god, get this shit out of here. They are banning Odysseus and Mystery Flare Dragon. So these cards have been hugely problematic for quite a while now. You know, everyone's been talking about them, they've been talking about how premium is just unplayable because these degenerate decks just destroy you turn 3 and you don't really get to play the game, so... Thank god they're out of here, they were really obvious problem cards. I think everyone would be really upset if they managed to not ban these somehow. We don't have any changes for premi or for V Premium or Standard, which, fine, fair enough, V just got an update, and Standard I think is in a good place, nothing really needs to be banned. Plus, they just got the new Lyrical set, the meta's probably being shaken up again by that, so no real reason to ban anything just yet. In the EN format, we do generally get different ban lists. We have yet to have a situation where JP has banned something and we haven't, so I wouldn't be too concerned as far as whether or not they're going to ban these horrible cards. Uh, whether or not they'll add anything extra remains to be seen. After that, we have the release of VDBT08. So in December for JP, we're getting set 8. And it looks like we're already getting a couple of new cards there. Given the current release schedule and how we're kind of a few months behind JP, I imagine because we're getting set 7 in December, we're going to get like the Chronojet list and then probably this in February, unless this and Chronojet come out at the same time. I guess we'll see. Uh, so the first thing they announced for DBT08 is updates for all the glitters, so... That's a really nice thing. A lot of the Glitter decks have very specific support that they need, so Tamayura, although she can kind of call anything from your soul, the best thing to do is to call out the dolls, so having new doll forms is something that's really nice. You know, Maple originally was kind of more of a toolbox card that helps you get back other copies of your Persona ride for Thagria, and is also just kind of a body on the board for other decks, but seeing her get a new version will be nice. It might be something to really upgrade the Greya decks. Rooa, you know, I think Radalina and the Momoke token were kind of your main offensive option, so this is just another thing. They do have the new promo order that searches out copies of her, and I believe it was just Radalina and not the exact name, so, you know, this should be a nice new target for the order. Uh, looks like Obscudide has this big demon knight thing going for him, so Eva does call out things with Obscudide in the name, I believe, and not exactly the Obscudide we had in the previous set, so having another call target will be good, especially because, you know, late game you can kind of run out of Obscudides and then Eva is stuck to three attacks, so if you have eight of them in the deck, that'll be much more consistent. And then a new version of Mikani. I don't know too much about Chaos, I feel like he probably j just needs more names in general for his Highlander playstyle. And then we're getting two new ride lines, Alkite and Shosho Doji. Bushi Road, stop printing things I want to play. You know, I like cool demon dudes, and I've kind of gone all in on Dragon Empire recently, although I don't have Eugene stuff yet. But yeah, this is a cool new dude for Dragon Empire. Looks like it's inheriting like the Murakumo, Nubatama, demon dude aesthetic. I like that, so we'll see what it does. And then 
you know, same thing for this one. We have another waifu archetype. It looks like she summons some sort of kaiju. Next, we're getting new encounter cards for set 8. So we're going to have Luke here for Dark States. We haven't really had anything truly representing the Pale Moon play style yet, like, uh, what's his name? Greedon and Borrow Magnus. Both have ways to call things out of the soul, but that's not really their main focus, you know? So it'll be nice to have Pale Moon properly represented in Dark States with something that's focused on, like, curating your soul and being able to call things out. We're also getting Blue Storm Dragon Maelstrom, so this is a really interesting one because I think out of all of the encounters so far, Aqua Force has had the most direct parallel in the form of Flagberg. Obviously, art-wise, a lot of people have joked that Flagberg is a Lolan Maelstrom, but also in terms of the actual abilities, the original Maelstrom from Limit Break was like, LB4, if it was the fourth battle or more, it got 5k, and red text on hit, you can retire something and draw a card. So, you know, that has very direct parallels in what Flagberg does, because Flagberg is like, Three battles or more, you draw a card. Four or more, you retire two things. And then five or more, you get the triple door and plus 10k, which kind of parallels Glory Maelstrom, who also had a guard restrict skill. So I'm really curious what they're going to do. Are they going to lean into the original identity and make it very similar to Flagberg, or are they going to lean more into the V era one, where it was more focused on just straight aggression with the restand ability? Next we have Minerva, so this is a card we have not seen for quite some time. I believe she does not have a V version yet. Uh, apparently the artist for her is just really expensive, so I think a lot of people are already wanting this because waifu. Uh, Chris in particular is probably just going to talk Atlas's ear off about this. I don't live near them, so I don't have to hear it as often. Yay me. And of course... Bushiro knows what they're doing, so they have special serial number versions of this card, similar to Phantom Blaster, because waifu. And then, that was it for the recap slides. Thank you to Freedom Duo for making these again. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, but in addition to that, we also have news about Deer Days, so it's going to include cards up until DBT05. So, that means we're going to have everything up to... Cray Cross and the second wave of encounters, but we're not getting any of the Will Dress archetypes like uh, Youth Burke and all of those guys. That's a little unfortunate, but also understandable, just because it takes time to develop a video game. Although, those cards are going to be planned for DLC, so hopefully when the DLC comes out, we'll get caught up to at least around set 7, so that Deer Days and the TCG are at similar paces. I'd rather not be in a Master Duel situation where we're just so far behind that Master Duel is basically its own format. And then finally, we have news about Monster Strike Volume 2. We didn't get Monster Strike 1 in EN, so this isn't really super relevant to us, but it is taking up the December time slot, it looks like. So, you know, that's a thing. We'll probably have to look at reveals for this. Not super relevant to us, but whatever. And that's going to be it for this recap, so there wasn't a whole lot of news coming out. You know, it seems like the product schedule was already pretty set for the fourth quarter. Set 8 is the only major announcement. I imagine we're going to get more in January, but, you know, everything revealed for Set 8 looks really exciting, and thank god we have this premium ban list. That's going to be it for this video, everybody. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.